God bless you. How was your night? Yes. Indeed, our God has been good and his mercies endures forever. We have been talking on build an altar unto the Lord in daily realities. God bless you, Sina. And then for some time, in fact, after the trip to Texas and I came back, I have been, oh, it is as if I need sleep like never before. And so I've been taking my time mm -hmm. when it has to do with my coming online. But mm -hmm. I believe I'm getting um, quite strong and all that. So this morning uh, we are going to be continuing with build and altar unto the lord path eight i want each and every one of you to go back listen to the previous ones go forward listen to the recent ones all of them are very needful and they are all very important and there is not even one that you can afford to miss. Our faithful God is indeed doing awesome things among us. He has not permitted mm -hmm. any one of us to see shame. The challenges have been there, but God has always given his children testimonies commensurate to his name. And that mm -hmm. is why we keep saying glory to God in the highest. Amen. So, this morning, we are going to be looking at crying against the altar. Crying, even to ask you that since we started this altar discussion, what have you learned? What would you say you have learned? Can I see someone say, at least everybody should just chip in what they have learned in the course of this program. Because today we are looking at crying against the altar. At least if there is nothing again you have learned, I have been able 
to make you understand that you have an altar unto God and you have an altar unto the devil. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. There is an altar unto God and there is an altar to the devil. But the one we have been talking about is the altar unto God. But we are going to be looking at this morning, 1 Kings chapter number 12. And in 1 Kings chapter number 12, uh, verse, let me start from 30 to read. The Bible says, And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto them. And he made an house of high places and made priests. Yes, God bless you. The altar speaks. Amen. And made an high places of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. We all know that the sons of Levi, God bless you, Joel. God bless you, Zandi. You're all welcome into the house. This morning, we are continuing with the teaching on build an altar unto the Lord, part 8. But in this part 8, what we are looking at is crying against the altar. Crying against the altar. We saw in 1 Kings chapter number 12, a king that was a total rebel unto God. He re, he, in fact, the, that king was another thing altogether. And we saw, God bless you, welcome Edna. And we saw all the things that the king had been doing. And one of the things that he did is that he brought in people to begin to rear up altar matters that are not the sons of Levi. They are not the priests. They are not the people that were supposed to perform functions. And of course, those altars were not the proper altar. And in verse 32, the Bible says, And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month of the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. You know, every day I keep telling you that whenever the devil does anything, he will always do something like, he will never do the original thing. He will always do something that looks like original but can never be original. That is one thing. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, love. But will never be the original thing. It will always have a comma on it. So that is exactly what was happening here. He said they were organizing a feast that wants to look like one of the feasts of Judah. And Bible says, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in better. And if you can remember, Bethel was the place of sacrifice. It was the place of the altar. That was where Abraham raised an altar unto God. That was where Jacob had an encounter when he got to the place of the altar. It was still in this better that this king decided to go and start defiling uh, uh, something that has been there. Speaking in their favor. Okay? So now, the Bible says, sacrificing unto the cows that he has made. You see? Man made God. That song says, with their eyes, they cannot mm -hmm. see. With their hands, they cannot touch. With their ears, they cannot hear. I say, man made God. Man made God. Man made God. Man made, I will never worship man made God. Gods that you make with your hands, you begin to worship. Gods that are pocket gods, you can pocket them, put them in your pocket and begin to move from one place to another. Our God is the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. But you need to understand that the Bible made us to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, rulers of wickedness. If we remember, when Moses got to Pharaoh's palace, he dropped his um, um, staff and he turned to a snake. And Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing. The devil will always like to do what? To come against what the Lord is doing in your life and in my life. 
But when you know what to do, that is when you can actually stand and cry against an altar. This morning, what are we looking at? We are looking at crying against an altar. You are the one that knows the kind of things that is happening around you. You are the one that knows the one that wants to turn themselves into a reoccurring pattern. You are the one that knows it because they say that he that wears the shoe knows where it pinches. This morning we are looking at what? Crying against an, an altar. Every altar that is speaking against your lineage, as you cry against it today, it will be destroyed forever in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that, you know, he went to Bethel, the place of the altar, and he, 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 he just prepared calves, more than them, and he began to sacrifice to them when the feast that is usually used to come in, oh, the devil is a liar. Every manipulation of the devil around your life, around your loved ones, today we stand in agreement and we say no more. Lose your hope. You become powerless from now. In the name of Jesus. Child of God. Whether the devil likes it or not. We will experience unstoppable victories. Unstoppable. No man can stop our victory. Because Jesus is for us. And so nobody can be against us. Praise God. The Bible says. That. Uh, so did he in Bethel sacrifice him unto the calves that he has made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he has made. Every priest of every negative altar that they go to report your matter. We stand on the authority of the word of God. As they mention your name for negativity. Their self and their children will go in for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse 33, So he offered upon the altar which he has made in Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month. <laughs> oh, child of God, we're in the 8th month. Can you remember? We're in the 8th month. Every agenda of the devil. Every regathering to, to, to reactivate any negative altar against your life or against your testimony by the unction upon my life and with the power in the blood of jesus fire will fall and consume them now in the name of jesus today we are crying against the altar so as we are discussing from time to time we will just cry against them praise god we we'll just lift up our voice and cry against them because we're going to cripple the activity of negativity in our path. Enough is enough. Jesus came for us to have victory and have victory functional in our lives. The Bible says, even in the month which he has devised in his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Amen. And burnt incense. Child of God, these people don't rest. Daily do they imagine and devise and devise weapons against the children of God. But I have come to tell you today that you also have the capacity to form a weapon against them. Yes, so. And by the time you form a weapon against them, your own will work because Jesus is standing by you. Praise God. And so, you know, when you're reading a scripture and you really want to understand what that scripture is trying to explain to you, is it that you read the scriptures preceding it or the scriptures after it? And so that was why we started with 1 Kings 12. And our anchor scripture in it was to be 32 and 33. Because where we are actually going to look at is 1 Kings 13. Okay? 1 Kings 13 from 1 to 5. Praise God. Praise God. And so, the Bible says, And behold, there came a man of God 
out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. God has the capacity to fight his battles. Because whenever you come to the place of the altar, the power that is greater usually wins. And because Elijah knew that, Elijah told them, bring out your stuff, let me bring out my own. Then the one that has the more capacity, let fire fall on their sacrifice. Because he knew that God was with him. And so this was ongoing in the place of the altar in those days. And so the Lord couldn't continue looking at it. The Lord had to send a man. I keep telling everybody that whenever change has to come, the Lord has to send you a man. Until the Lord sends you a man, you will not experience the change you have been looking for. There is always a man that your celebration is attached to. I pray for you today. This year, December, will be the best you have ever spent. Because the Lord will send you a man speedily mm -hmm. to the glory of his holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord on to Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense, as usual. Hear me. They might go again, as usual, to their negative altars, to call your name. But you know what? They are going to meet with their doom this time around. Praise the Lord. They are going to meet with their doom this time around to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can someone shout amen? You know what happened? He said, And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. He cried against the altar. He cried against the altar. This morning, I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are. And I want you to decree and declare any altar speaking against my life, speaking against my testimony, speaking against my loved ones, speaking against my prosperity, Today I cry against you. I cry against you in the name of the Lord. And I say, O oh, altar, O oh, altar, O oh, altar, lose your power by fire in the name of Jesus. Praise God. The Bible says, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. <laughs> Behold, a child be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. Powerful, 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 powerful. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. He cried against the altar and spoke what he wanted to happen upon that altar. He said that a child shall be born. And that child that is born, all you priests of this negative order performing doom against the children of Israel, you will become the sacrificial lambs on these altars. So as we are crying out today, the priests of those negative altars, oh, as they mention our name, they will go in for us with their generation in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, oh my God, this is so sweet. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know if you, that is why each and every one of you need to have an altar that is speaking for you. You need to have an altar that is speaking for you because when your altar is speaking and another negative altar want to raise up his head, your altar will speak against it. Just like the blood of Jesus speaks better things more than the blood of Abel. Eh? That is what will happen. Yes, so better was the place of the altar. There was an altar for the children of Israel. So that king, even with all his diviners and enchanters, couldn't stand the better altar of Abraham. Abraham. Do you know how many generations passed? But it was still speaking for the Israelites. And that was why 
the Lord sent a man of God and said, go and cry against the negative altar. When you have an altar speaking, you can stand and cry against any other altar. And when you cry against any other altar, that your altar that is speaking will begin to rear up a daily cry per minute, per second, per hour. You rear up a daily cry against the new altar. That is how it happens. Do you know what happened? He said, he said, I read again. That verse 2. I read again. I think I should, I, I, I should paste it again so that you can study it and understand it. He said to him, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. He didn't cry just like that. In the word of the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born upon the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense on you. Praise the Lord. And men's bones shall be burnt upon you. Every priest of negative altar. The fire of God will fall and consume them upon their altars. In the name of Jesus. The mistake they will make from today is to mention your name or that of your loved ones. In any negative altar. As many as gather against you. The fire of the Lord will consume all of them in the mighty name of Jesus. And in verse 3, the Bible says, And he shall give a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes upon it shall be poured out. Oh, child of God, every altar, wherever they are, that is speaking against your peace, against the peace in that home that is working against your productivity, working against your fruitfulness, this is the sign that the Lord will bring upon them their altars shall be rent and the gods of their altars shall leave them alone their backbone will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says in verse 4 and he came to pass. You know, the funny thing about the devil, he will know that God is with you. He will know that you are entitled to win in that battle. But you know the next thing he to do? It will still try to fight. It makes no sense. Trying to fight whom the Lord is on his side. Remember the scripture we read? Was it yesterday or thereabout? That if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? But do they consider that? They don't consider it. Am I making sense? Look at what happened in verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam had the saying of the man of the Lord, that he, of the man of the Lord, which had cried against the altar in Bethel. And he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he has put forth, dried up. <laughs> Can someone shout hallelujah? The Bible said, dried up. So that he could not put his hand back again. Oh, 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 every priest, anywhere that they are, walking from any angle that they are, as they mention your name, their tongue will cleave to the roof of their mouth and they will not be able to bring it down again in the name of Jesus. Look at it. He stretched out his hand, pointing to the man of God, trying to say, lay hold on this man for us to finish him. The hand that he pointed didn't return. The Bible said that it dried up. These are the days of power. The whole world is waiting for us to manifest. That is what the scripture says. That the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Child of God. Christianity without power is a uh, 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 class work. Am I making sense? I have not come to lecture you. I have come to tell you that there is power in the name Jesus. There is power. There is power. Do you know what happened? He said to them, stay until power comes on you before you go out. That was why when he ascended to heaven, the, the, the disciples waited until they assessed power. That was when they started operating. Child of God, any Christianity that is not exhuming power from time to time, that Christianity is in question. And our own is not in question because our God is still in the business of doing good. Miracles are forever. And upon this altar, your own miracle will get to you. Your miracle will pursue you and catch you. You will not be the one to pursue that miracle. 
It is your miracle that will pursue you and catch you. As you're sitting down, it will fall into your lap. As you're going out, it will come and meet you. As you want to close your door, it will knock at the door. It says, I have arrived. But in this season, your miracle will locate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, his hand dried up. His hand dried up. He couldn't bring it down. We are looking at crying against an altar. Crying against an altar. Everybody in the house needs to have an altar speaking for them. Yes. So that you can cry against any negative one. X, they say, cancels X. Let your altar cancel out every negative altar that want to speak against you. Or speak against your husband. Or speak against your home. Or speak against your finances. We bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says. And the king answered and said to the man of God. <laughs> Remember he was the king. Oh? He was the king. Everybody that has boasted of their pocket God. They will come and beg you. They will return to beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, and the king answered and said unto the man of God. <laughs> Entreat that. Okay, no. First of all, we're in verse 5. Before then, he said, the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God has given by the word of the Lord. Child of God, that sign will not pass you by. Oh, yes, so you will see the sign. And how you will know that your sign has gone forth is that those people will come begging you. Some of them will confess to you what they have been doing. Yes, sir. some of them will confess to you. Because it is the season for them to confess. They will confess to you all that they have been doing at your back. To the glory of God the Father. The Bible is the word of God. And hear me, the scriptures cannot be broken. Anything you see in scripture can actually happen for you. Anything you have read in scripture, it is a reality. That is what God can do. All power belongs to him. The powers in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth, it belongs to him. Whenever the, 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 the power of God is not associated with what you're doing, there is a challenge somewhere. Child of God. But I see the Lord doing for you exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever hope more than you can ever believe all those things that look as if is something you cannot explain there is no need for you to understand it fire from above fall and consume them in the name of jesus it's just like one of us that sent me that he had a very terrible dream this morning that he had an encounter with a snake in the dream and the snake beat him i say it's a lie I called him immediately. I said to him, that is a lie. We reverse it. Oh snake, bite yourself. Oh snake, bite yourself. Oh snake, bite yourself in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Because every arrangement of the devil to abort that man will be put to shame. Oh yes, they will abort themselves to the glory of the living God. You know what the Bible says in verse 6? And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me. <laughs> and pray for me that my hand may be restored again. And the man of God besought the Lord. And the king's hand was restored to him again as it was before. I see them coming to be the ones to beg you. Child of God, whatever the Lord does is forever. No man can tamper with the testimony of God upon your life. You will surely testify. You will surely testify. You will surely testify in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Mm -hmm. It is well with your going out. It is well with your coming in. It is well with all that concerns you to the glory of God the Father. God cannot lie. God will not see you and become a liar. The problem that a lot of people are having is that they want to do God in their own terms. It doesn't work that way. You have to put God as priority. 
You have to put him as priority, I am telling you. Make God your priority starting from now and you will have a new song to sing. Child of God, if you're not yet part of our WhatsApp group chat, pick up the number, chat us up, join the prayer line. Oh, there is nothing like too much prayer. It's plus two three four eight zero five eight four double six one zero one. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. There is nothing like too much prayers. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the place of prayer in the life of a man cannot be overemphasized. If you're not yet part of any ark in the house, join one. Join mm -hmm. one. If there is none around you, pioneer one. Child of God. In faith giants, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. In this particular place, miracle flows like oxygen. Yes, so why? Because our God is a God of miracle. Our God is a God of miracle. Our God is a God of what? Miracle. He does not lie to us. He has never failed us. He shows up for us anytime that we call upon him. Join the activities online, especially the war room war night. Someone was asking me about the hour of help. Hour of help is our 12 noon prayers. I think I will call up some of the hour of help prayers on uh, Olomoje World Outreach page, Dr. Olomoje. Well, if you have not yet liked the page, like the page, share the page on your timeline, let people like it. Be part of this radical revival global evangelism. I see the Lord wiping your secret tears away in this season. You will have cause to tell someone that indeed Jesus is real because you would have experienced him in another version of him to the glory of the living God. We are advertisers of Jesus and that is the reason why anytime, any day, we we'll keep telling you Jesus must be famous. God bless you. Amen.